Thank you to the sponsor for today's video, Verb Energy. I don't know about you guys, but I don't sleep at night. I am pretty sure I have undiagnosed insomnia. And when I have to wake up and do things, coffee just doesn't do it for me the way it used to. So I found these, they are caffeine bars with as much, can you read that? As much caffeine as an espresso. Can you read that? Influencer. The bars are infused with organic green tea. So you have the same effect as a cup of espresso without the jitters or the crash that comes afterward. They're gluten-free, dairy-free, vegan-friendly. Each bar is low in sugar and just 90 calories. They're super convenient. I mean, they're tiny. They're tiny. I fit them in my purse and they're delivered straight to your door. What more can you ask for? The trial kit gives you the option to try their four most popular flavors, blueberry crisp, pumpkin spice latte, vanilla latte, and salted peanut butter. They have one, this one, ooh, ooh, cookie butter. And in July, AKA this month, the Verb are launching their new flavor, peanut butter cup, peeny beady keep. Verb has a cool trial pack where you can try their four most popular flavors for only 95 cents. All you gotta do is pay shipping and that's only available to the first thousand people who use my offer. I am missing a thumbnail. Thank you again to Verb Energy for sponsoring this video. Let's get back into the video. Casey Musgraves pillow, Coca-Cola pillow. Ready to film. Hello guys. Welcome back to a long awaited nail update. I did glue these on today and I'm missing two nails already. So need to get that out of the way. Here is another art history video. Y'all DM me every single day on every social platform I'm active on, talking about when's the next art history? When's the next art history? Are you never gonna do it again? And what if I didn't want to? And what if, yes, I never did it again? Well, I've been bullied into doing it again. So it's a good thing that I like what I'm talking about. So by the title, you can tell that today we're talking about Caravaggio, or if you're white, Caravaggio. Caravaggio is one of my favorite artists of all time, probably in like a super nerdy way, because when I say like, art history. This is like art history. Middle of the 1500s, like art history. The stuff that will bore you to tears, unless you care. And lucky for you guys, I care a lot. So I'm gonna explain it in a way that hopefully incites passion within my audience of brain dead dodo birds. Love you guys. So before we jump into it, I just wanted to give a shout out to Nerdwriter. Hi, Nerdwriter, I love you. Me and editor, bestie editor, love you, can't wait for the new drops. Nerdwriter does a fantastic intro to Caravaggio. If you care to delve into this whole era of art history, he really does a fantastic job explaining it. So I, I really encourage you to go watch his video. All right, so let's begin. Caravaggio, born 1571, died 1610, was technically a Baroque artist a man of unfathomable talent, did commissions for the church mainly, but was a notorious sinner. He spent his life, the majority of his life, on the run from the authorities. He was just a really aggressive person. He actually died at the age of 39 from, ding, 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 you guessed it, lead poisoning from his paints. Very poetic justice. He's got a really interesting biography if you're interested in that kind of stuff. I don't really want to get into it today. Today, I really want to focus on his techniques, the lasting impact from his works and a few notable works that have changed the course of art forever. So whether you know it or not, you may have seen some of Caravaggio's works before, um, namely Medusa, boy being bitten by a lizard, the crucifixion of St. Peter, Judith beheading Holofernes, and a little fun fact before we get started is that during this time period, the 16th and 17th centuries, Italian men were referred to by their first name and the city in which they came from. A great example is Leonardo da Vinci, his last name is not Da Vinci. He is from the city of Vinci, the more you know. So Caravaggio's real name is, Italian fans, please excuse me, Michelangelo Merisi da Caravaggio, because he was from the town of um, Caravaggio. While other Italian artists of the time followed the normal conventions of late mannerist painting, which is of mannerism, if you want to get technical. Caravaggio painted the stories of the Bible as visceral and often really bloody dramas. So to start, we're going to be toying with this idea of involvement. Caravaggio made sure that the viewer of his works was directly involved in the painting, meaning you're an active part of viewing the work. So example time, let's take a look at the taking of Christ, also known as the betrayal of Christ by Judas. So here we see Judas has just identified Jesus to the Roman soldiers. They're now taking him away to be crucified. If you look in the upper right, there's a man with a very prominent brow holding a lantern. This is actually Caravaggio. 
he inserted himself into the painting, which wasn't unheard of at this time. Raphael did it in the School of Athens. Michelangelo did it in The Last Judgment. Actually super gross, like a skin suit of Michelangelo is painted into it. But in this work, The Taking of Christ, I like the poetic implications of what Caravaggio has done here. He is holding the lantern with his right hand, which we could infer as his painting hand, meaning that the artist is illuminating the story for the viewer. I want you guys to be aware of the cropping of this image. There is a picture within a picture, the little circle around Jesus that John the Baptist and Judas are forming around him with the cape and the arm of the Roman soldier. The arms are almost being thrust into your space. The glean of the metal off of the soldier's pauldron is like blinding. It's you are an active part of this painting. It's like you were there. And this really pissed off a lot of people at the time because these are divine stories. They're divine depictions. But this isn't very divine. Caravaggio based the players in his paintings on real passerbys in whatever Italian city he happened to be in at the time. The face of Jesus, Mary Magdalene, St. Peter, or any or all of them were based on random passerbys. Waiters, prostitutes, servants. He incorporated humanity back into these divine scenes versus let's say 300 years prior when they were very 2D, Jesus very clearly had a halo above his head, you know, a cross. It was very much literal. Here, we're seeing the drama. And I really like that. Caravaggio depicted these famous scenes as if they were happening right here, right now, like outside your building. Now, I would be doing a disservice to the art community if I failed to mention his skilled use of light. Light underpins the meaning of a painting. It tells you what you should be looking at, where is the drama, where is the action, what is the focal point that the artist wants you to focus on. Specifically, Caravaggio's use of light shows the importance of reaction, um, gesture, pay close attention to the hands, expression, you know, emotion. So I now toss to you, my Dora the Explorer audience, do you know the name of this technique? Shout it out if you do. If you don't, that's okay. It's called chiaroscuro or tenebrism, which essentially means violent contrast. It's this easily recognizable harsh light. It's this divine illumination. You know this light. It's natural. It is godly. It is the golden hour. We still know it and use it well to this day. It's nature's spotlight. And in Caravaggio's painting specifically, it is an intentional placement. Here's an example not by Caravaggio, but it's one of my favorite works ever. It's called The Adoration of Christ by, um, I think his name's Garrett. Shit, I don't know. Look at the way the light wraps around the figures. I mean, it's tr it's a marvel. It's a marvel. Now, here's another beautiful example that I actually mentioned earlier. It's Judith slaying Holofernes or beheading Holofernes, Judith killing Holofernes. There's a bunch of different titles for the same work. This work has also been interpreted by many different artists. Um, I'm gonna be focusing specifically on Caravaggio, obviously. So short backstory on Judith. Judith was a beautiful widow in the Bible. Her city was under siege by the Syrian army led by General Holofernes. Knowing that Holofernes desired her, she snuck into his tent one night when he was blackout drunk and beheaded him. As she should. I think it's fantastic. Look at the emotion on the faces, the light. Even the blood isn't very realistic, but it's still, I mean, it's Caravaggio, it's his touch, it's his interpretation, and we can't be mad at it. Now, let's note that Caravaggio was active during the Counter-Reformation, which, if we remember our history, the Counter-Reformation was the Catholic Church's response to the Protestant Reformation. So at this time, Caravaggio was accepting commissions from the Catholic Church, which in turn were used as propaganda against the Protestant faith. Now, where Caravaggio stood on this, personally, I don't know. Money is money, especially the church's money. They're coughing that shit up. The church at the time believed that art should help Christians understand and reconnect with their faith. And when you have a populace that is majority illiterate, can't read, what better way to teach them the stories of the Bible than through art? Cause they can't read. All in all, Caravaggio is a very, very interesting character. If you have even the slightest bit of interest in furthering your knowledge on him, um, there's uh, some great documentaries on YouTube, some great books, um, even just looking at his works and kind of studying them for yourself. You know, what do they evoke in you? How do you feel when you look at a Caravaggio? If you have any questions, don't ask me. Go Google them. <laughs>
Again, I am not an art history expert. I just really enjoy this stuff. If you have any comments, questions, or concerns, you can leave them in the comment section, but whether or not I will pay attention to them, that's a different story. Next, I think I want to do um, Anthony Gaudí, if I have any Spaniards in the chat. I really want to focus on Gaudí on the um, Sagrada Familia or on uh, Parque Güell, things like that. It is very, he's a weird dude. Weird dude, would love to get into him. All right. Thanks guys. Okay, bye. My missing thumbnail, whatever.